Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Let's talk about oxygen diffusion corrosion and figure out if your heating system is at risk. Welcome to Inspector Insights. Before we go down the rabbit hole of this three-part video series, let's define what we're talking about while we're still standing at the entrance of this rabbit hole. A hydronic system is a heating system that heats a liquid and circulates it through a loop, such as an in-floor radiant heating system or a heated driveway. When oxygen diffusion is not controlled, the metal components such as the boiler, circulators, and valves will rust and fail prematurely at great expense. If you don't have a hydronic system and don't want to learn about what I just described, then please check out our other videos and blog posts. But if you're interested in a story about finding balance, social isolation, making friends, destructive behavior, and ultimately a rift that couldn't be bridged, then you're going to want to stick around for this one. Okay. Spoiler alert, maybe it isn't as dramatic as that. Oxygen wants to find balance between the inside and outside of heating pipes. Iron oxide can stop new oxygen from meeting new iron. Oxygen wants to make friends with iron. Oxygen and iron's friendship results in the destruction of the place they call home. And ultimately, oxygen and iron are forever separated by a stainless steel heat exchanger. Now that we know the whole story, let's try to understand it a little further. To make sure we're on the same page, let's define a few words in the way that we'll be using them in these videos. Permeable means a material that allows a gas to pass through it. Diffusion is the movement of a gas from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, eventually finding a balance or equilibrium. Ferrous is a material that contains iron. Oxide is a chemical compound made of oxygen and iron that is also commonly known as rust. Hydronic is a type of heating system that heats a liquid and circulates it to heat a home. This might include in-floor heating systems, heated driveways, or a hot water tank for your hot showers. Now that we're on the same page, let's start figuring out if your hydronic heating system is at risk. There's oxygen all around us, but when we try to add or take away oxygen, it never seems to last. If you fill up a balloon with air, it might eventually go flat. And if you try to get all the air out of a bag of food, it'll eventually fill back up. The reason this happens is because most materials are oxygen permeable, which means oxygen can pass through the material. Some materials are better at stopping oxygen from diffusing through them, and others are worse. Think about blowing air into a balloon and how the balloon traps the air inside and eventually the air will escape, but the balloon does a good job of holding the air back. Now think about doing the same thing by blowing air into a sock. The sock does a bad job of holding back air and it'll never be able to inflate. The same thing is happening with your hydronic pipes in your home. If the pipe is good at holding back oxygen, then there can be different amounts of oxygen inside and outside of the pipe. This type of pipe is called an oxygen barrier because the oxygen can't pass through the pipe. If the pipe material is bad at holding back air, the oxygen from outside the pipe will find its way into the pipe and vice versa, meaning that there can't be different amounts of oxygen inside and outside of the pipe. This type of pipe is called an oxygen permeable pipe because the oxygen can pass through the pipe. When a closed loop hydronic system is working properly, heat is transported using liquid that is circulated through the pipe loop and back to the heat source. And those small amounts of oxygen trapped inside the pipes will start to corrode the ferrous materials, which are materials that contain iron. These ferrous materials can be found in cast iron boilers, steel circulator pumps, metal valves, and so on. The result of this corrosion is rust, and the more oxygen that is present in the system, the more rust there will be. The amount of oxygen in the system has nothing to do with high internal pressures or low internal pressures of the pipes, but instead the oxygen permeability of the pipes. With that said, corrosion is expected and in a closed loop system, the limited amount of oxygen trapped inside the pipes will create a very fine layer of rust known as iron oxide. This oxide layer will form a protective layer of rust on all the ferrous parts of the system, preventing stray oxygen atoms from causing ongoing corrosion. Iron oxide is created any time that three oxygen atoms bind with two iron atoms. There are 16 types of oxides that could be produced, but we'll just call this type of oxide rust. And if no additional oxygen is added to the system, all the oxygen atoms in the system will find an iron atom and create rust together. The layer of sacrificial iron oxide is expected and it will protect the rest of the ferrous materials by absorbing all the oxygen atoms in the system and converting them into rust until the closed system is completely oxygen free. If the system is drained for maintenance, the drained water will be rusty and disgusting, but that's expected. When the system is refilled, new oxygen atoms will go to work rusting away the iron until all the oxygen in the system is depleted yet again. Unfortunately, if oxygen is free to enter the closed loop system through loose fittings or oxygen permeable pipe, the corrosion of the ferrous materials won't stop until all the iron has rusted away, causing the system to fail catastrophically. 
The corrosion is exacerbated with high temperatures, which is why you see more oxygen permeable issues in heated driveways and staple up residential in-floor systems, because those systems need more heat to produce the desired effect when compared to other radiant systems. As the system is rusting away, the liquid inside the pipes will turn into a slurry of rust that is constantly circulating around the system, bumping into pumps and valves and heat exchangers, and slowly wearing away the components until they no longer function as intended. Eventually, the boiler, pumps, expansion tank, or valves will fail, and the system will become clogged. At that point, action needs to be taken. In the next video, we'll be discussing how to identify the pipes in your system to know if they're oxygen permeable or not. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.